Oi, tudo bem? Você chegou no Descomplicando a Moda. Aqui a gente fala sobre história da moda, tendências e hoje vamos ter uma conversa muito especial com a Orieta Pelizzari, direto da Itália, para a Linea Pelle Fair. Eu quero muito que vocês conheçam a Linea Pelle. Bora descomplicar? Hoje aqui a gente vai ver uma conversa que eu tive com a Orieta Pelizzari. Orieta é uma expert de moda, de tendência. Ela é consultora junto à Câmera Moda e junto a essa feira que se chama Linea Pele. Ela está à frente de levar essa feira para uma realidade online. Do Instituto, do, instituto não, do Escritório Matori, que é um escritório de tendências, a Orieta também está por trás dos novos talentos da câmera moda da Budapest uh, Selection, que é uma seleção da Hungria que desfila na Semana de Moda de Milão. É, a gente conversou, a gente conversou bastante sobre tendências atuais e aí a gente fez um apanhado e é a conversa que vocês vão ver aqui. Espero que vocês gostem. A Linea Pele é uma feira de produtos para decoração, uh, moda e também automobilísticos. Eu estou falando de couro, não couro, sintético, verdadeiro. Uh, verdadeiro não, né? Origem animal mesmo. Uh, e uh, materiais que serão tendência. Quando? Gente, em 22... Olha que bacana, às vezes eu falo de coisa lá atrás, né? Hoje eu vou falar de coisa lá na frente. E me pedem muito para falar, Tete, por onde eu começo? Gente, se você não sabe a história onde tudo começou, como é que você vai saber onde é que vai parar? Né? Aqui você vê tudo. Vai dando seu like, deixa seu comentário, que eu gosto muito da participação de vocês. Welcome to Meet and Match Digital Show of Linea Pelle Fair. Hello, Maria Teresa Laudares. Hello, Orieta Felizzari. Uh, thank you for having me again. Such a pleasure to see you. It's a pleasure for me and for us to have you again and to talk with you about your experience and about your journey in fashion. Thank you. Tell me more about what's happened lately in fashion for your side. Well, lately we have been researching a lot on materials, sustainability, and of course, on this new atmosphere that we are living in this new present of ours. So are you talking about uh, Brazil in specific? Because I guess that you are in, uh, in Brazil. I don't know where exactly. So tell me more detail about this. Well, I, I am in Brazil. I am in Brasilia at the capital of Brazil. Of course, still in touch with people in Minas Gerais and Sao Paulo and Rio where things, um, products, are made and I, I keep on working with research and with consultancy in fashion and research linking fashion history and trends. I think materials are a fundamental part of your research, correct? Yes, you're right. Materials are, are fundamental otherwise we wouldn't have a product and what do you think designers in brazil are more uh, focused to find new solution new proposal in materials i think we are looking for materials that give us 
above all a sense of um of going back to the roots but in a sensorial way that is textures do you imagine something more tactile or do you imagine something which is the image and the the quality or the aesthetic aspect i imagine something more tactile of course with a lot of quality because longevity now is really important so as you you once said uh more quality less quantity and do you think that consumers change it some needs and some attitudes that also influence that the selection of the material lately i guess so for two reasons one we have this new generation of consumers who of course they are on reviews all the time they want to know where things come from and on the other side our older generations since they have been more at home as i told you they want to feel that kind of a cocoonish feeling of comfort and softness when they are at home and then when they are out in streets we feel like we have seen in many fashion shows we feel the need of protection like a hapas uh, as they say it in french i think in italian is also the same thing so it's a lot of protection i think the need of protection in quality so that you know it will last in touch so that you feel uh, it's comfortable i think that's it since you are uh, your base in brazil but of course your your head is all around the, the world which elements do you recognize in the brazilian consumer when they perceive the tactile aspect of a material for bags for shoes for apparel i see that they really like uh, natural materials in the mean of natural leather uh there is not such a thing although there are people who who praise for veganism and who praise for um technological pure artificial 3d things the it's not like the major consumer the major consumer usually when i'm i'm talking about, of course about um luxury standards when we talk about italian leather uh they really want quality so they want the natural material and finishing uh touches like padding and so for instance they mention some brands and then you know what material they are talking about you know what i mean like luxury products made in italy even if the world is not aware good products are made in in italy even if they mention a label we you know since we work with research we know oh that's italian that's great and do you think that contemporary or young consumer in brazil could be interested to know more about the story making of the material yes because they are so much on reviews they are so much on tracing so mm -hmm. i guess they would like to it, it they they feel assured i uh, i they need this what am i really buying Oh, this is interesting because this means that having a different way to select the product, judge the product, if you know more about the story making. Exactly, exactly. You are absolutely sure, exactly. And uh, what about sustainability in term of heritage or in term of uh, protecting and respecting the people that make things we are having that 
and I would say we are also having a lot of praise for for regions and their products and artisanship. Like if you talk about Amazonia, then they are really praising the products and looking up on communities that either they produce it or either that the product will uh in in its selling help that region somehow you know what i mean like when the yeah. profit of the product will help developing a community um a social situation so people I understand. Really it. they all I understand. they are also considering like there is a brand here that uh ever ever since the beginning of this uh, subject sustainability uh, they decided if we do a little we have done something so it's not like huge big steps but small steps i understand what you mean and this kind of support in the community the local community is also part of the process to keep and maintain an heritage way to make it, the artisanal uh, aspect, and even the people and culture around these types of material. Yeah, it's like the Campana brothers, like they go and they analyze, how can I, like a basket weaver, how can I get this basket with the culture and insert in my product so that my product communicates a certain culture. Well, I have another question for you. If you need to choose, if you have to choose some material for your best outfit, which colors you will pick that could suit the Brazilian vibe? at the moment black soda lot but i've been hearing a lot of coral wishes let's say a lot of people are saying oh i like black i wear black but i love coral hmm. it's funny but and then people ask me oh what do you think about coral or do you think coral would sell? And there is also this about this color nowadays. Ah, oh, this is like a coral uh, vibe, which is in the world of red, in the world exactly. of oranges. Could be also a way to express optimism. Exactly, I do agree with you. Because we are looking for better days and i think that is why again we are um in this uh building up our environment and i see a lot orieta i forgot to tell you i see a lot of need of leather in the furniture again for that idea of long lasting i see we also interview a few architects thanks to you uh, from Brazil and that was a great request of leather maybe more than before because exactly. it's the more is the most long lasting material when we think about something that has to remain for the life and has to become the best vintage and when you think about in the past when this came like in the 20s all those uh, furnitures that were created by them and survived a war. So we have that heritage in our minds of all those great designers who did furniture with leather, you know, Le Corbusier and all those, uh, Miss Van der Hoel, and we have those still nowadays considered classics that you should have in your house if you want a contemporary kind of feeling but classic so in our minds these are futuristic expressions of a time that survived a war 
So I think this is very important. Wonderful, Maria Teresa. I like it what, what you said because you suggested to choose and pick the highest premium level of materials, which is suitable to make some pieces that will become the future classic. Yes. I think we are living this time as product makers, when we talk about research in materials, I think we have in our hands the time to make history in the future, like once they had. And I will thank you. Thank you very much, Arietta, for this opportunity once more. And I do hope to see you soon in Italy, in oh, wherever around the world they will allow us to. 